Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking about Governor Lee's heartbeat abortion bill. The bill has been uh, proposed. The language has not been written, but it's going to be uh, brought forward in this legislative session. We have with us Francie Hunt. She's obviously opposed to this bill. She is with. She is the executive director for Tennessee Advocates for Planned Parenthood. And we're going to go back to the phones. Several calls. Well, let's go to Julie. Hello, Julie. Hi. Hi. What's on um, your mind? My question, I have a question about, like, I, I think I might have two questions. I want to know where people can go to get, like, actual accurate information about, like, abortion statistics because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation right now. And I also want to know how this bill that Governor Lee is proposing is different from the six-week ban bill that we saw earlier this year. The six-week ban bill. Yeah. Okay, where accurate information, and then I don't, I guess give us background on the six-week ban bill that she's asking sure, about. Sure, sure. I think for accurate information, I would invite people to go to uh, Planned Parenthood. They can uh, give us a call. They can look up our website, pptnm.org. That's Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and North Mississippi. So it's pp tnm.org and um, they can get our number and some information there and, and reach us that way to talk to a person that can help give information. There are lots of really great websites as well. Um, the Guttmacher Institute is a place that has a lot of uh, policy research at the national level. We have um, Planned Parenthood Federation of America, so that'd be ppfa.org and, and um, at the national or the local level, we'd be able to point folks uh, to the right to the right place um, relative to our issues. Um, uh, and the other the question was the six-week ban bill. Oh yeah. She, how is this different? But tell me first, what is the six-week ban? It's bill? the same. This uh, the, uh, the six-week ban is more accurate um, in that you know I think the the reason why the opposition calls it a fetal heart be, be, bill is is to kind of um, evoke emotion. Again, not really from a, a scientific perspective. The the, the we know that um, a fetal heartbeat could be detected as early as six weeks. So what really we're talking about is banning abortion at six weeks. And you know that's when most women by by the time they've missed their menstrual cycle, which has only been you know if if they're regularly cycling, it'd only be two weeks in. Um, they would be pregnant a lot of times before they realize that they're, um, uh, the, the abortion would be banned for them before they even realize that they're pregnant. So in that aspect, it's very much the same um, in terms of intent for what they want to do. Again, they want to ban abortion outright. Uh, and the impact we know is that banning abortion does not eliminate abortion. It just makes it illegal and unsafe. Uh, the, what happened last year is that because so many of us from both sides of the aisle recognized that it was so blatantly unconstitutional and so terribly fiscally irresponsible, uh, it, the bill stalled. And the Senate Judiciary held a special hearing over the summer, actually. It was a two-day special hearing. And, uh, and that's where they were hoping to kind of resolve um, how they were going to be able to move forward or not on this uh, unconstitutional bill. Uh, again, this bill has not yet been written, so it's very difficult to comment on it. But from what we understand, we think it probably would have uh, some sort of uh, ladder mechanism where uh, they'll, the, or a trigger mechanism rather, where they'll ban it at this stage, and then if that does, if that's found unconstitutional, then it'll be a ban at the next stage, and 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 so forth. So, um, and uh, the trigger mechanism in and of itself has also been um, uh, suspected of of being unconstitutional as well, from my understanding. So, it'll it'll be interesting to see how how that plays out. I'm I'm not a lawyer. I, I just happen to know. Uh, how that's been working in other places. Okay, let's go back to the phones. Kimberly, hello, Kimberly. Are you there, Kimberly? Hi, I am. Hi, go right ahead. What's on your mind? Um, my question is for someone who is pro-choice. What ways do can we can I be involved? And in, like, what do you think the best use of resources and is for me to speak out against the bill and stand up for what I want as my right? 
Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. I really appreciate that because we need all hands on deck. Uh, it is not without any significance that even though it's somewhat of a political posturing to do a press conference before you have a bill, we still want to take it seriously uh, because we actually have the governor of our state pushing for what he's wanting to be the most comprehensive anti-abortion bill in the country. So we have to take that very seriously. Anybody that honors a woman's right to choose and an individual's private uh, medical decisions needs to stand with us uh, this year. And so there's a, a few ways that they can participate. We uh, have a day on the hill coming up on February the 11th. We would love to have you join us. If you want to reach us through our website, pptnm.org, or you can go to our Facebook page. We have a pptnm and a tap uh, site Tennessee Advocates for Planned Parenthood. You can find us that way. Message us. We'll plug you in. We have several action forums planned um, and at those action forums we'll be able to go more in depth on some of the legislation because the governor's bill is just one of several bills that we're monitoring this year and we're excited to be kind of pushing forward on some of the those uh, proactive things that, that I mentioned earlier where I hope we can find some common ground to support uh, maternity care and birth control and preventive care for children. So, Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the phones. Rob? Hello, Rob? Yeah. Go right ahead. I, I just wonder how that uh, a man, a governor and a legislator, all men, how they can decide for a woman for what her to do with her own body. Uh, the mental stress and strain on that woman, carrying that child for nine months, uh, put on there by uh, a governor and a legislator, to me is totally wrong. That's between the, that woman and the child she's carrying is between her and God. It has nothing to do with the men in power or the laws. It's the law of God. The child, if the child is aborted, will go straight to heaven. That woman, that's her decision, in my opinion, to be made by her and the Lord. And that's okay. all I have to say. All right. Um. I'm sure they would say back, go back to the, the child and, and the life and, and that kind of thing. But he's uh, talking about uh, how can men make this decision for women in the legislature. Oh, Rob, I loved everything you had to say. We could use you in the legislature. <laughs> that was great. We need uh, higher thinking men that support uh, this per very personal decision making process. So I really appreciated his comment a whole lot. Um, it is it is ironic. I mean, we, we know that abortions can happen um, uh, across gender. Um, uh, but I, I do think that it is notable that many of the legislators that would never have to actually be faced with this decision are the ones in power making the decision for other people. Um, and it's when when you look at the folks on both sides, you can see you could see that uh, demographic difference for sure. Uh, I, I hope that we develop as as a community and as a nation where we can develop real empathy towards one another. And I, I really appreciated what he said that um, just just being supportive for that woman. I think the best, and even to the other caller that was not even on our side, I think that for any individual that is facing this decision, regardless of their decision, has to be met with compassion. Um, and not judgment and not being called murderers and not, you know, being protested against when they're coming to our health center to get birth control. It, it's, it's rude. It's disrespectful. Nobody likes that. Uh, I think that there's enough, you know, I just urge our, the listeners to focus on 
the ways that we could unite. There's a lot of work to be done in this world. There's a lot of work that we, could, we that needs to be done for our children in our own communities. Let's do that. Let's focus on that. Okay, we're going to take a break. Um, stay on the line if you're on the line. We'll get to your call. Take a break. Be back right after this.